Hi there, and welcome to another how-to Photoshop lesson from Quentin Carpenter, Nature of Flowers. Okay, today we're going to look at making a text portrait. So you can see from the image here, I've made a picture of my face. I've added some text over it, and I've made the text see-through to create this really cool text effect. It's being used quite a lot at the moment. It's quite a popular effect, and I'll just show you how to do it. So first of all, we need a photograph of a face. Here it is a picture of my face. You see I've masked out the background and added a black background to create that bold effect for the text to sit on. Next I need to cover off half of it where the text is going to go. So I draw a rectangle over the half I want to hide. I use the paint bucket tool and I make sure I've got the same colour as the background. I click new layer over here, make sure that layer is above where the face is. Click on it and I've now got half a face covered in black. Okay, press Control D to stop the edges flashing. Now I need to use the text tool. I need to make sure I've got the right font so I can choose my fonts here. I've gone for impact because it's quite a big, bold lettering. Um, I can change the sizes as we go, but I will start with the size 100 and I'll make sure that my text is white so I can see what I'm writing. I've also changed the indent so it's coming out on the right hand side so when I type, it will have a nice effect. So the first word I used was we. I've also got caps lock. Press on typing in capitals. There's my we. So I can put that and I can rescale it to whichever size I would like as I go. And what I'm going to do is put all the typing in first and then I'll clear the words at the end. So the next word was want so I'm going to go back to my detect type tool type in the word want click on the move tool once I've typed it and then I can position it and rescale it to how big I want it to be and make it line up if you do all the text in one go you can't have this fine tuning effect that we're doing now so then it's we want more so Go back to my text tool, type the word more, click on the move tool, move it to where I want it, click on the text tool, check what the next word is, hope, and I wanted this quite big, so I'll write the word hope, click on the move tool, move it where I want it, scale it up so it's much bigger, Put it into that. What I really liked about where the hope was is it covered the eye and you got that glint from the eye coming in. And then we want more hope less, so we want the word less. And more hope less, it's quite small, so make it a bit smaller. And then we want another word, which is fear. Now we've locked down and all the restrictions at the moment, you know, you can really express how you're feeling in your text when you do these responses. And then from this life was the last bit of text. So from this down to the move tool, this is quite small. small position it where we want it there and then life was the last word so we'll type that in like that and that was quite a big one so we'll position that where we want it there we go so that's fairly straightforward. We can spend some time moving them all around. And what we want to do is get the face showing freedom. And there is a really quick little way of doing this. First of all, rather than just clicking on the magic wand tool and click on every letter, which we could do, or the quick select tool and clicking every letter could take ages, I'm going to show you how to do a color range selection. Because they're all in white, if we click on the sample color and it's selected as white, you can see that all the white pieces become selected. We click OK and they will instantly be flashing. Now this is where the fun begins. All we've got to do is hide the eyes from each word that we have just typed. So we just have a flashing outline. Click on our black 
layer that we have just created earlier. And then on the keyboard, we're going to press backspace. Then on the keyboard, we're going to press control D. And now you see we have our amazing word it's written over a face to create a face portrait. Experiment with different words, different ways of doing it. And you could do it black and white, do it in color. You could do all sorts. Not only can you put faces in here, you could put other things in there. So there are so many options with this really simple technique. So you type the words. Once you type the words, you use the select and the color range, and then you select the color and then you press backspace. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers. Thank you very much and goodbye. Okay, good morning. We're going to be looking at doing a Photoshop lesson today and it's all about doing a photograph of an animal and a face. This is the example by Wanda Wolf's Cat and I that we're using for inspiration. You can see that she has combined a face of an animal and and a human face. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that in Photoshop right now. So, Photoshop, we'll press Control V. We will then notice that we have now got a layer with a cat on it, and I'll close the eye and a layer with a face on it. Very straightforward. Now, in order to make the pictures line up really effectively, if we make the layer with the cat on about 65% or 50% opacity, you can see that the cat starts to become a little bit see-through. Now we can use this to line up the face. We can use the mouse to arrange the cat face. We can enlarge when necessary and really work out where the most effective way of lining it up would be. Obviously my head is a different shape to the cat's head, so we need to make sure that we cover as much as we can, getting the mouth and the nose lined up as best we can, the eyes almost in the right place, possibly a little tiny bit bigger still. It takes a little while to get things arranged, cover up that part of my head, drag it down. We'll know when the eyes are working because they will start to line up really nicely. About there. And then we'll press enter. Now you can see that the cat and the human face are starting to blend together. Now, to make it really work and look as close to the artist as we can, we're going to use a soft edge eraser again, this time fairly large but not massive. And I'm going to start to take out some of this side of the cat so we can start to see that we've got half a face of human, half a face of cat. Now, what we need to do now is make the cat start to become more solid, and then we can make some more arrangements as necessary. I'm not quite happy with the way the mouth's lining up now. That's slightly better. There's some problems with the chin. So what we can do now Let's go on to the layer with the face and just slightly move that slightly. Possibly not. I don't know if I like that. I think I'll go back there. Now, we could leave it as a color version, but I think, personally, if we didn't change the color away and make it black and white again like we did before, we get image adjustments black and white. Click OK. Click on the layer with the face. Image adjustments, black and white. Click OK. I think you can see there it does tend to blend more effectively. Now, there's still a few bits I'm not happy with. So, we've got to make some enhancements. I think if we experiment with the exposure on the face and take the exposure down a little bit, bring the offset up, you can see. I'm starting to lose some of that background, but keep the face really sharp. There we go. You see, just moving different adjustments and exposure offset and gamma correction can make a huge difference to the image. So there you are. There's my version of the famous Wonder Waltz version. So there's the original, 
and then there is mine. So you can see I've been inspired, I haven't copied it exactly, inspired by the original and created my own version. So there you go, hope you enjoy, have fun making your own animal human face. Thank you for watching. Hi there and welcome to today's Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at making a disintegrated face like the one you see in front of you here. To do this we're going to be using two layers and we're going to be using some layer masks. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is open up a photograph of a face. Make sure it's on a new layer from the background, so you can see here it's on a new layer. And then you're going to need to create a layer mask by clicking the layer mask button here. Once you've done that, you will need to select a brush and you will need to go into the brush menu and you will need to search through the brushes until you find a nice splattery effect one. And I'm using one of these ones here. Okay, once you've done that, you can change the size of it up here so you've got it the correct size. Then once you have got the mask set up, you need to make sure you're on the black, you're on the paintbrush, you've got the right paintbrush setting, and then you need to start to splatter out parts of the face like so. And to do this, you could use it to get rid of large areas of it and splatter out lots of these effects like so it's a little bit laggy and you will see that we end up with our splattered disintegrated effect like so now if you see on the one I did earlier We've got some other things going on. It's not just a question of rubbing out parts of the face. We've also got a layer where there is more of the face over here that's been fragmented out. So to do that, on our layer here, we are going to duplicate that layer. Click OK. We can delete this mask. So we've just got the original picture. Now we need to have part of the image, so if I go back to the one I showed you earlier, that's behind here to create these different colours. And so to do that, we're going to liquefy this part of the face. We're going to go into the liquefy menu, which will just take a moment to load. But I'm just going to go back and do it a different way. Liquefy. And once we get the liquify menu, we need to make sure on the finger forward warp tool, we need to make sure we've got a decent size warp, and then we're going to warp out the image so that we've got the colours that we're going to use for our effect, where we're going to have the fragmented bits going out of the face, like so. Once we've done that, click OK. You'll then see we've got a really weird looking image, so we're going to place that behind our layer mask, we're going to go back to our layer mask, we're going to go back to our paintbrush tool and we're going to make sure we're on the right part. So we click here where the layer mask is, make sure that we've got the white border around it and then we can mask out more of our image. In fact we need to be the other way, we need to be adding masks to it you'll notice that there's no picture here, so it's not masking it out. So on that way, we go onto this layer, go onto the paint bucket, fill in that area, fill it in with white. Then when we add our layer mask, you'll see that we are then covering that piece up. So we go back to that setting, light, click on here and now you can see we are getting that fragmented effect that we have in the background of our other image that so looks like parts of the face are disappearing. Now we could also add in 
a layer mask on this one as well and that way we can have a dual layered effect going on so if we layer mask out some of this just hide that layer a moment make sure on the layer mask make sure on the black here and then we can start to layer mask out some of this so that way when we put the other layer on top you can see we've got a more interesting effect going on and we can change between each layer as we click on it so that we have got more of the right image coming through from our layer mask make sure we're on the right bit so always click on the actual area here where the layer mask is and then add in all the bits you want to mask out here and here and open up the other layer and you can now see what is happening with our image i still think we need to mask out some more of this layer so click on it there's white dark black bit there and there maybe bring some around this side as well and then open up that one and then you can see now on my original one here you can see i've also added in a gradient background so i'll show you how to do that on the, this one so we go into the background layer here we choose a gray and a white and we use the gradient tool to add our gradient in and we make sure it's the right way around and then we will need to go to the layer where the layer masks are and we need to make sure we have got enough layer mask to cover all the area that we need so it would be worth changing our brush to a regular brush up here and then masking out the rest of the area on that layer and then masking out the rest of the area on this layer so we have it how we want our image to look and make sure we do some on this one as well and some around here and some on this one and you can see now we're starting to get that really cool gradient effect so if i go back to the original one here you can see i worked around these areas here to create that really cool splattered disintegrated effect with all things in Photoshop, so you can see on this one I need to add in some more areas here, so I'll leave some of that. Go into this one, leave some of that. And then go on to this layer here. And add in a few more of our our dots. And a few more on here. And there you go. You see, we've made our disintegrated picture. So the more time you spend on it, obviously you can get better results. Have fun making your own disintegrated portraits. Um, Obviously, you could do it different ways as well. You can have different shaped brushes to create different disintegrated effects. I hope you've enjoyed watching today's tutorial. If you had, make sure you pop over to Quantum Cup Nature Files, hit that subscribe button, tick the notification bell, and you'll be alerted every time I make a new video. Okay, thanks for watching, and have a good day. Goodbye. Hi there, and welcome to today's Quantum Cup and Nature of Flowers Photoshop tutorial. Today, we're going to be looking at making a pixel stretch effect go with our double exposure and our disintegrated portraits that we've been doing recently. Yeah. To do this we need to be in Photoshop and you can see here that one selection of pixels from this picture has been stretched and warped to create this really cool kind of like wave effect. To do this we'll need three layers. We'll need a background layer and we'll need 
a pixel stretch layer and we'll need the subject layer. So I'll show you how to do it from step by step so you have a go at doing it yourself later on. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get a background. I've got quite a large rectangle shape here. Place a picture that you're going to use to create the pixel stretch on. And from that, you need to select the subject. So you go to select and subject. Wait for a few moments. Well, Photoshop finds the image. And then if there's a bit you don't want, which is this bottle of water here, I don't want that in the image. Just go to the minus tool here and click on that section and it will remove that section from your selection. Then once you've got this, you need to copy and paste it. So we need to go to edit, copy, edit, paste. And you can see we've now cut out the subject. Next, we need to select a pixel to stretch. So to do that, we're going to use the tool over in the toolbar that is called the single column marquee tool. We will draw a single column where we want to take our selection from. And once we have done that, we will go to edit, copy and edit, paste again. And you will see this is our layer with a very, very small selection of pixels. We'll go to the stretch tool or the move tool rather, and we will make sure when we move it that we are stretching out our pixels, which currently we are not. So if that happens to you, go back. Oh no, it's just a bit laggy. So we get our pixels, we stretch it all the way across the screen like so. Nice and simple. And press enter. Now we need to make sure that they line up where we want them. So you move it around to where you want it to be. Let's make sure it's exactly where you want lined up with the front of the image. Like so. Then we will make sure that our figure is in front of the selection. And then this is where the fun begins. So once we've got this stretched pixel effect, we could leave it like that and that looks quite cool. Or we could do some more sophisticated work with it. So we're going to go to edit and transform and we're going to go to warp. So to do this, it's better if you zoom out slightly so you've got more room around the image. Each blue dot will move the piece. Imagine you've got like a sheet of paper and you're going to be twisting it around. So if we drag this part up to here and then we drag the other part from this blue one down to here, you can see we've got a nice twisty effect. If that's not what we want, but well, that looks really cool actually, we can go to edit, transform, and warp again, and then we can take more areas of it and we can move those out as well. So we can get it exactly how we want the warp to look. Maybe move that one up slightly, that one in a bit, and that one over there. Slightly. So you can see we can create these really, really lovely warped effects. So that's cool. So we've got that. And I'm just going to pause for a second. So as you can see, we've now got this warped effect here. There's one more element we need to add to our picture, and that is to create a background. So if we click on the background layer, I've been getting really into gradient backgrounds at the moment. So we'll select a nice gray color here and a white color there. We'll use the gradient tool and we will draw a diagonal line from one corner to the other to create our gradient effect. And there you are. There is your pixel stretch effect. Okay, thank you for watching and hope you have fun making your own pixel stretch effects in the future. Obviously, if you enjoyed this video, pop over and click that lovely subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. Hi there and welcome to today's Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers Photoshop video. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these double double tessellated patterns using a photograph of a flower. You can see it creates this sort of circular effect reminiscent of the work I've been doing with the flower of life. Um, to do this I'll talk you through it step by step and nice and simply. So you need to be in Photoshop, you need to have a photograph of a flower. You need to go to the move tool and you need to go to edit transform. You need to make sure you haven't locked the layer first. So you go to edit, edit, transform, scale, 
and we're looking at 50% wide and high. So we take the little box in the middle and it will automatically make it 50%. We then scale it down to fit into the corner and we'll see a pink line appearing when we know it's in the right place. Now, to do this, we then need to copy and rotate and tessellate our image. So we go to duplicate layer, click OK. We move our layer over and line it up so that it's in line with the other one. And we get a little pink line to show that we've done it. So then we go to edit, transform, and flip horizontal. We've now got two layers. We can then click on both of the layers with, by pressing shift, right click, and merge the layers. Once we've done this, we are going to go to right click, duplicate the layer again. This time we're going to move it up so that it fills the top of the page. We get the pink line knowing it's in the right place. We then go to edit, to transform, and we flip vertical. And we now have our first tessellation, okay? We're going to merge the layers together again. So we're going to right click on both of them, merge the layers. So we've got one layer with all of the flowers on. Now we want to turn it around, but we also want to make the canvas bigger so that it fits when we turn it around. So we're going to go to image, we're going to go to canvas size, and we're going to make sure that the width and the height, both in this case, say 30 centimeters, and we click OK. We then need to duplicate the layer one more time. And this time we need to go to edit, transform and rotate 90 degrees. And you can see we've now turned it 90 degrees on itself. This is really cool. And we can use opacity to make it see through. Or we could use Overlay, which I think gives a better effect. It makes it more vivid with the colors showing through. Once we've done that, we then need to merge these two layers together. So right click, merge layers. And to get to the finishing touch, we need to duplicate that layer. Click OK. And once we have done that, we go to Edit transform rotate and we need to turn it 45 degrees which creates this effect we then need to go to our overlay and overlay it on top and you can now see we have got our beautiful circular pattern made out of the flowers this amazing thing and if i zoom in slightly by pressing control plus you can see that beautiful effect now we could choose to crop it. We could choose to add a background to it. It's up to us. If we did want to move the background to it, this is how I would do that. I would merge the two layers together again. I would then add a new layer, make sure that's underneath. And I would bucket fill it with black so that I've got a nice black border on it. And there you go. Have fun making double, double tessellated patterns. Obviously we could keep doing this forever and with lots of different pictures, but I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. If you like it, obviously come over to Nature of Flowers and hit the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. Okay, thanks for watching and enjoy making your own examples. Okay, thank you very much and goodbye. Hi there and welcome to today's Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these beautiful double exposures using a photograph of a mountain scene with some lakes and a photograph of a face. We're going to be using layer masks to do this with and I'm going to talk you through step by step all you need to do to create one of these really cool effects. They're very popular, lots of tutorials on YouTube already but I thought I'd add one of my own to the mix. Okay, to start with you will need a photograph of a face. Here's a photograph of a face. And you can see it's got this um, blue sky background, which we'll be removing in a minute. And we also need a photograph of the landscape. So I will show you how to place that first. So we go to File, Place Embedded. We click on Place Embedded. We find our picture of our landscape and click Place. It will then put it on top of it in the middle. 
we can move it where we want to put it and we can press enter once we pressed enter it will then become a layer that we can then work on you'll see this little square in the corner here we need to rasterize our layer before we can do anything so once we have done that you can see that we now have a layer that we can edit now in order to create the effect we have here you'll notice there's another layer that i haven't put in yet which is the bottom layer which is a nice subtle gradient layer so i'll show you how to do that first so over here we're going to click the plus button in the corner we're going to make a new layer and we're going to drag that layer to the bottom of the pile so that it is at the very base and i'll close the eyes on these two layers so you can see we're now working on the base layer you'll know which layer you're working on in photoshop because it goes light gray over here you'll see the paint bucket tool or you might see the gradient tool you see the gradient tool click on it and then you need to select a nice grayish color here click ok and you can see i've got a gray and white effect here then using the gradient tool i'm going to draw a diagonal line from the top to the bottom to create my gradient effect and you can see it's very subtle grays into whites like so then i'm going to open up the picture of the face again now we need to make the picture black and white first of all so we'll go to image adjustments and black and white here and you'll see that the color will disappear from the image if i'm on the right layer and you can see how easy it is to get the wrong layer so we go to image adjustments and black and white and you'll see all the color drain away from the picture now we need to select the face shape here we could use the select tools here the quick select tool would work we could draw it with the lasso tool but we're going to use the subject select tool today so we're going to click on subject and you can see that it's selecting the subject now i don't want this part of the face over here so i'm going to go to the quick select tool select minus and then click on here until i get rid of the bits that i don't want here so i've got a nice smooth edge and if i get too much i can use the plus to bring a bit more back in like so that's exactly what i want there now we could copy and paste this onto a new layer but today we're going to use a layer mask so once we've selected the area that we want to crop out we click on the add a layer mask button here and you'll see that instantly it removes all the background and leaves us with a nice cut out edge now we want to go to our layer with the landscape on and we want to change the opacity so we can see exactly where it's going to go we use the move tool and we can move it around i wanted to keep this part here in line with the shadow of the chin and i want to make it a bit bigger so i drag it up more i'm going to line the eye up with the mountain range and make it so that it works really nicely with where we are going to put the image approximately there i think is quite good then we change the opacity back to 100 percent and you can see where it will line up here now we want a nice faded edge so to do that we're going to click on the layer mask on this layer we're going to see that it's now highlighted into a box and we are going to use the eraser to erase parts of our image now with the eraser we want it on soft round we want it fairly big but not huge so probably about 500 would do and then we can start erasing and you will see nothing is happening so we use the paintbrush we switch over to our black and then we'll start to erase and you'll see immediately it starts to paint black in the layer mask which then creates a hole so that we can then use it so you see how it's different to using the eraser in fact i'm going to make it the, a bit smaller so we've got more definition we're going to get the eye bring in some of the cheek and the mouth and make it a bit a little bit bigger
like so and we're going to bring back this edge so that we've got the neckline coming in now the great thing about using a layer mask is if we make a mistake we can um, switch the colors over and then paint back and you can see that it will come back exactly as it was which is quite cool so get rid of that bit <coughs> we then want to use some of the layer mask along here to blend the edge out make sure we're the right way around and then we can start to create our double exposure effect image and then we will then be able to experiment with our brightness and contrast so we'll go to our image adjustments brightness contrast and we can make it lighter a bit more contrast or less contrast and click OK and then you can see we are creating our double exposure image so if we go back to the original one you can see again we've got different lining up areas so we could just look at where the clouds and the hairline is make sure on the right one to add or remove so we can bring some more of the clouds back across here make this a little bit bigger and we can also go on to this layer and if we just wanted to remove that little bit of hair there we could go to our black brush and just start fading out and make sure on the right layer so we click on to here and then start to fade out some of that as well like so so you can see we could lose the hair if we wanted to or we could bring it back if we weren't sure now the great thing about photoshop is obviously you can go edit undo goes back to where it was before and I think I actually prefer it like that so there you are there's our double exposure using the layer mask you can see there are three layers layer mask in each one and hopefully that's really straightforward um, if you have any questions obviously leave it in the comment section below and thank you for watching another one of Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers Photoshop tutorials if you enjoyed watching them be sure to come over and hit that subscribe button Okay, thanks for watching and have a good day. Goodbye. Hi there and good morning and welcome to this video to show you how to make a response to Erwin Blumenfeld. You can see over on the side here, there's an example of a portrait where he's taken a front looking face and a profile face and combined them to create this really eerie looking image. I'm going to have a go at doing that over here in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, you will need two photographs. You will need a profile and a front facing photograph. You will also need to do a little bit of prep. So the first thing we're going to need to do, let's move Photoshop over slightly so I can get to all the menus, is just make the profile picture see-through so I can arrange it in the correct place. You can see it's, I took it and it's slightly too big so I need to squeeze it down and press shift to keep the constrained proportions. I'm going to move it to the correct place, line it up so that I have the chin matching the chin. I still need to move it a little bit more. Make sure the head is exactly the same size. I'm going to come across and you can see it should all line up exactly where I want it. So if I do the prep first, it makes the rest of the pieces work a lot easier. If you get the nose and the eye exactly and the eyebrow all lined up now so that's the prep bit done okay i'm going to need to make that back to being solid also i need to crop the image i'll do that while i'm in this mode actually so i go to the crop tool i drag a box from approximately here over the face down to approximately there and leave a large gap over 
Wikipedia, so I'll do that. Press enter, then press control plus to make the image bigger, and I can see what I'm working at, and I can do any adjustments to where my two layers are now. So I want to bring that high slightly away from those, a little bit further down, bring it over a little bit. It's these little adjustments now that will make all the difference later. Now, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to add a layer behind everything. So I'll drag it to the back and I'll click on the map and move that up there. So the background layer, I'm going to bucket fill black. So I'm going to click on the black, click on the bucket, and the bucket fill. So I've got a black layer behind everything, which is going to create this area here. Next, I need to add some details to it so on the layer which morning i'm going to use the select tool you can okay so once i've got this layer what i need to do is select the head shape here now there's different ways of doing that and I'm going to try and do it the most simple way to show you the easiest way first, see if it works. We use the magic wand and we'll make sure we've got a tolerance of 30. Now you can see it doesn't quite take the whole image, so I'm going to change that and put on a tolerance of 20. Even less, so we need to make the tolerance higher. But we'll try. Still not quite getting it because of the shadow. So instead, we'll use a different technique. If you can't do that, we'll use the quick select tool this time. And this time, we'll make sure we've got a fairly biggish size brush. And we'll click inside all of the face bit. This can be more effective, like so. Okay. I've got a little bit at the top that I don't want, so I use the minus tool and I'll just get rid of that bit so I'm nice. And I'll go back to the plus tool and I'll make it and I'll it on the minus tool again. That was the plus tool, sorry. And do that. Or not, I can always clean this edge up later. Right, so I am fairly completely happy with that. So once I've got the shape, I'm going to make a new layer. And then I'm going to get some white paint and I'm going to bucket fill in the new layer like so. I'm going to select inverse first and then I'm going to bucket fill the layer. So if we now press select deselect we should see we've got a white edge so if I hide that you can see there's my profile outline okay next if i bring the layer with the face in behind this and open the eye you can see there is the face appearing in the image which is great i can then adjust it so that i've got it exactly where i want it in relation to my image once i've done that I will then need to go to the layer with the face on, hide that, hide that. And using the quick select tool again, and the plus, I will select the face so I can put a nice black ground in. So what I will do here is I'll simply copy and paste it, Control Z, Control V, hide that one, and then you can see I've got the face. I've got the white cutout area, and then all I need to do then to make it look really fantastic is on this edge up here, I will use the eraser tool, which is way bigger than me now. I have a nice hard edge on it today. And I'm just going to clean up this top edge here, making sure I'm on the right layer with the edges on. area here and then I need to go onto the layer with the face go to image 
adjustments and black and white. Click OK. And then I'm just going to come over here and have a look at the original. There we go. I think we need to enhance our contrast slightly, lose some of that bit here. So this would benefit from a soft edge to erase in there. Quite a large one. Just tidy that edge up. Obviously, bring the back like that a little bit in there. I'm also not very happy with the way that blends in there. Just fade that in. Then we need to do some adjustments to our brightness and contrast. So we'll make it a little bit brighter, give it a little bit more contrast, or a little bit darker actually. Click OK. And then I think what I might do is just move it around ever so slightly to get a better fit so that it fits more effectively and put the nose over slightly the mouth in there. I always need to stretch it a tiny bit. I'll know when it looks right because it will create that wonderful optical illusion. There we go, happy with that. So We'll come out of that, kind of need to apply that, and there you go. There is our Irwin Bloomfield response using two photographs and a couple of layers and a bit of adjustment. Okay, have fun trying making your own one of these, and you can also try while we're here. Um, rather than having a completely white area here, you can always try doing a gradient in here. And I might just um, just do that quickly for you to show you what that would look like as well. So on this layer, I would use the magic wand tool. Select that area. I'll do it on a new layer to see if it works or not. To do a gradient, you need to have black and white selected. We go to the gradient tool, which is hiding behind the paint bucket. And then we will need to draw a line across the screen and fill in. I think it needs to be a bit longer. I think if I then control D and if I go to image adjustments brightness and I brighten that up a little bit. And I think to be honest that is more effective than that. So there's that and there's that. There's that and there's that and there's that and there's that. I think with the slight gradient, it has more of an old-fashioned feel. If we look at the original, if I move this over slightly, I think, yeah, I'm much more happy with that. Okay, so that's how you add the gradient for the finishing touches. I'm not really sure about that bit up there, but there you go. Like I say, experiment, have fun, making your responses, and um, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, obviously check out more on Quentin Carpenter Nature Flowers on YouTube. Okay, and thank you. Goodbye. And good. good morning. Welcome to another Photoshop lesson. This time we're going to be looking at an artist called Victoria Seema, and she caused a sensation on the internet a little while ago with her storm in a teacup. I'll show you a few examples to have a look. So you can see she places like waves and storms inside teacups. Obviously this looks amazing. She's a really talented artist and we will have a look how to do a similar version. I'll leave that one with a whale over there. First of all, we need to find some photos. I've just taken a picture of a cup and saucer. Here it is, so I'll enlarge the screen. I'll go and use my snipping tool to snip the picture like we did before. I'll create a snip of the teacup, make sure I've got the shadow and the table in the frame. Okay, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to go to Photoshop. I'm going to go File, New. I'm going to look for the clipboard option, click Create. And then I'm going to press Control V and I've pasted my cup. Now I need to go back to my drive, have a look for the pictures I took of some waves down at Hastings Beach the other day, looking for a 
really nice example one. That would be fantastic having those waves. So I'm going to use the snipping tool again. This time I'm not going to take the whole picture. I'm just going to take some of the picture so that I get the effect I'm looking for. There we go. Now remember, if you don't clip on the snipping tool, you won't actually create a snip. So new and draw the box, create the snip. And then I go back to Photoshop. I can go edit paste or control V, whichever works best. Now I've got two layers. There's my cup. There's my waves. Now I want the waves to be looking like they are coming out of the cup. So this is where it gets more exciting. I might stretch it slightly so I've got a bigger looking wave. And I want this to look like it's inside the cup. So like with the animal face, if I make this layer slightly see-through, I'll be able to see a little bit more about where it will line up. So I want the waves crashing across the cup and looking like they're spilling out. So I would suggest possibly there, maybe slightly over. And I'm thinking about there, maybe a little bit more. Now, before I showed you how to use the rubber, so I could use the eraser and I could rub bits of it out. But because I've got a shape already there with the cup, I can use a different tool this time. I can use the elliptical marquee tool. Now this is great because it will create a very straight shape, in this case an ellipse. And to do it, I need to line it up. So I look for the edge of the cup in both directions. Imagine there's a line going across here. And then I draw my shape across and it should fill the cup. Now, that would be great if I wanted to have the wave right to the brim, but most people don't have tea right up to the brim of their cup. So I do it again. This time, I imagine that I'm inside. So I leave a little bit of a rim. Now, you might find you have to try this out a couple of times to get the exact right spot to take the ellipse from. Because you want it to look perfect. So, approximately there, I think would work. Now, once I've got this shape, if I highlight and click on the eye next to the layer with the waves, you can see which part of the waves is inside the shape. Now, I'm going to do this one of two ways. The easiest way to do this is to go edit, copy, edit, paste. And then you see I have copied out that part of the storm. Now, it doesn't quite fit where I want it. So now that I've got most of it, I'm going to change the shape ever so slightly so that it is a perfect fit within the cup. And there you have it. So now it looks like I'm having a cup of tea and there's a huge wage crashing through it. Okay, that's the basics. Experiment, see how you get on and let me know. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy making a storm in a teacup. Thank you. Hi there and welcome to another Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers how-to Photoshop lesson. Okay, today we're going to be looking at an artist called Marcelo Monreal or Monreal. He is famous for taking portraits of famous people and adding flowers as if they are full of like beauty and wellness. And you can see he removes the face, the flowers come through, and he makes these basically digital collages. So that's what we're going to be doing today in Photoshop. To do this, you'll need a photograph of a face and you'll need some photographs of flowers. Now, as if luck would have it, I have both those things at hand. So here is a portrait of a face that I've taken. And the first thing I need to do is just unlock the background layer. And then we need to do some cutting out of the face, maneuvering it, leaving a gap, and then pasting in lots of flowers. I've got a folder here that is full of flowers, so you can see I'll be able to use those in a moment. Now, in order to do this, if we look at the artist's work, I'm just going to minimize that. You see, it's, it's a sort of organic shape that he cuts out. Now, we could do this in real life with a pair of scissors, paper, make an actual collage, or we're doing a digital collage. 
So we're going to use the lasso tool to do the selection. We've used this before, so we should be familiar with it. With the lasso tool, we need to find the right part of the face. I'm just going to go and have a look at one in a bit more detail. And I'm going to place it on one of these ones where it's like the whole front of the face. So we will go around very carefully, following the shape of the face and the cheek. Around, leave a small piece of chin so we can see that there is a piece there. Very carefully around the side of the face, up around to the eyes. Around the eyebrow, and up and over to there. Now, in the past, I've talked to you about copying and pasting, and we've done quite a lot of that. Today, we're going to do some cut and pasting. So, as if we're actually physically cutting it out with scissors, so we're going to go edit, cut. It will then disappear. We go edit, paste, and it will reappear on a separate layer, which we can then move around to place it where we want to have a gap so that we can have the flowers coming out from underneath and we can work out exactly where to place it in a moment now once we've done that we will need to add a layer behind so we'll create a new layer by clicking on this new layer tool here we will drive that to the bottom we need to go for a fairly dark color in the background so we'll click on our square a color selector color picker find a nice darkish pink i think would work quite well for this you see we we can select different colors by moving the rainbow bar here and then we can move it around here and you see the color that comes up here this is the color that we're picking and i think somewhere in that range there should be okay once we've picked it we're going to use the paint bucket tool, we're going to click on layer that it's on, we're going to click on it, and we're going to have a darker layer here. Now we're going to smooth out the edges a little bit later on as well, because we don't want it to look really amateur. -y. So now we've got the background bit, we've got the face cut out, we need to look at getting some flowers. Now one of the great things about saving files onto a computer and using Photoshop is you can drag and drop a file from your folder on top of and it will appear in Photoshop. Now sometimes the file pictures will turn up different sizes so once they're there you go on the move tool you make sure you've got auto select and show transform controls selected and then we can scale down the picture of the flower. We can then organize our layers. Now you see this little square here that means I need to rasterize my layer so I click on rasterize layer, that means I can then edit it. I will select that layer and drop it behind the face. So there is my first flower, like so. Now, obviously I don't want the background on this, so this will take a small amount of time to cut out. We can use the quick select tool and have it on plus, have a relatively small brush Maybe a little bit bigger than that. And we can select all the bits of the flower that we want to use. Now, you see this bit here? Didn't want that bit, so we click on the minus. Click on the bits we don't want, like so. And like so. And if you get too much, the plus bit again. And there we go. There are, is our flower. And again, we will use the edit cut, edit paste, because we are doing a collage, so cut and edit paste and then we can remove the background layer so now we have the first oh, make sure we click on the right layers the first of our flowers that is going to be inside the face so we'll put that one there and we'll press enter now if we wanted to turn it round we could click on it and we could use the turning tool to turn it so it looks in a better position. I really like the idea of it being there. And that is flower number one. So we will repeat the process. We'll use some forget me nuts. So we will drag those over. 
I'm actually going to put these on the top layer to begin so I can see what I'm editing. I will do the selection and then I will do the scaling. So if I use the quick select tool again, I click on the forget me not and select the pieces that I want to use. I might actually bring in a little bit of the stem there, maybe. Definitely not that there. Maybe a little bit, and then like that. And that bit, and that bit. And a bit there. Okay, I'm happy with that. So remember, we're going to get edit, cut. Won't let me do cut yet because I haven't rasterized layer. Remember that little square? Always remember to rasterize your layers. So we've done the rasterizing. Edit, cut, edit, paste. And then I can just literally bin the background because it's as if I was cutting out on paper in that background as well then I can do all this in one go so I'm going to change the layer order I'm going to rescale it twist it around a bit and you can see it will build up a digital collage of overlapping flowers I'll take some more so like that. there we go maybe make it a little bit smaller as well and you can see how the image is starting to build up. Now we will choose a, another flower. This nice pink dahlia. That will work really well. So drag that over. Remember, it's put it at the top. So we're going to do each step at a time. So we go to the top. When we do this, it's a good chance here to rasterize the layer while we're there. So we rasterize it. We go to our quick select tool. We go on to pieces of the flower that we want to keep and we can do this fairly quickly which is probably where it got its name from remember we go edit cut edit paste and then bin the background layer and on the next one I'll show you a different way of doing the same thing it may or may not be slightly easier or quicker. So I'm going to put this one up here, rotate it around, and remember to put that on the top. Now, what's really nice about Photoshop is you can actually click on the layers rather than calling them layer one, etc. If I double tap it, you can see I can type in what it's called, so I know which layer is which. So I could do that for each of the flowers if I so desired. Make that a bit smaller. Coming out there. Now, I think I want them all to overlap. So if I put that one there, and put that one there, the daisy goes into the background. And the forget me not, so there, and that is there. Okay. Now, we're going to do a few more flowers so you get the idea of what we're doing. Looking at that one as such. Have a look at having some yellow flowers in there. So we'll drag that over, put it at the top, press enter, drag it to the top of our piles. We can also do something really nice and make the layers a bit bigger over here by selecting this area here and dragging it up. So we'll put that at the top. This one might be a bit tricky with the quick select tool because it was yellow here, but we'll give it a go. It might be quite tricky. Yeah, so we'll have to use the minus part of the brush tool and tell it which bits we don't want. Right, I'll show you, I'll show you a different technique to do this. It might be quicker, it might not be, depends what works for you. We're going to go to select and we're going to click on inverse. And you'll see we get a flashing around the edge of the page. And this time on the keyboard, we're going to press backspace. It says it won't let me because I forgot to rasterize my layer. <laughs> so we're going to press backspace now. And then you see it's done the same thing. Press control D and we've cut it out. I don't know if it's quicker or not. It's definitely a different technique. I will place this flower I think, at the top here. We'll reorder it. 
in front of the yellow one. You want that there, or do you want down here? Let's put one of maybe there. Okay, now I think we need a couple more flowers. And maybe some bits with some greenery on as well. So, let's have a look. If we use this rainbow lantana, that would look really nice, right? So, we drag it over. Press enter. Drag it to the top of our pile. We need to make sure we right click rasterize layer. We use our quick select. We select, we need to be on plus. Click onto the pink and yellow petals of the flower. Go all the way around. And we'll do the inverse again. So we're going to get select, inverse, backspace on the keyboard, control D on the keyboard. Now, I think that was actually quite efficient that time. And I think this one will look lovely up uh, there. So if we do that, place that there, and I think. We're nearly there, right? We've got it in a bit. So let's have a look at the artist working for our inspiration. So sometimes there's extra bits with other flowers in. I quite like the flowers on the other side of the face as well. So we've got to go all the way around the face for this example. So we've got flowers around maybe parts of the eye. So we'll look at that. We'll do one more of our flowers. Have a look at this lily. I think that would quite nice. Yeah, that could work. So we'll drag that one on and we'll do some bits with this one as well. Press enter, drag it to the top, right click, rasterize layer. So this is a digital collage and we are creating step by step, piece by piece, to create this work of art. And you can see. We're doing it in real time, so you can see just how long these things take. And we'll go edit, cut, edit, paste. I might use some of the greenery from this picture later on, so I'm not going to get rid of that completely. I should drag it down, put it at the very back, and then I'll experiment with it later. So, this is the lily. Make sure I click on the right layer. So layer six is the lily. Press enter. And I think this would look really lovely if we had it. So we're getting some depth in it. Okay, now. What we need to do now is there is one other thing that is quite striking about his work. And that's the shadows. So we're going to use the burn tool. I think we actually might put a little bit of this greenery in here. So if we use... No, do you know what? I don't think we're going to use that paint. In hindsight, I don't think it will work. It would be... Have a look at our folder. We haven't got anything directly with leaves on. But I do tell you what, I do want that one in here as well. That's enough. Right, so we'll put that at the top. This will be the last flower we're going to use. Okay. We'll use our select tool again. Do the inverse way this time just to backspace not rasterized that happens every time even though i try and remember it so we've got inverse we just press backspace control d scale that around with the eyes 
position not So, I talked about adding some shadows a moment ago, so we're going to go back to the, this layer. We're going to go to our berm tool, which is here. We're going to make sure we're looking at shadows. We have a nice soft edge brush, make it the right kind of size, a little bit bigger. And we're going to just add in some, some darker tones underneath here, create some shadows. on the mid tones as well. So we'll have some shadows in there. And now underneath each flower, and this can get quite complicated, so underneath where this flower is, which is this one, so on the face, we're also going to put a bit of shadow in here. And then on the actual flower, so we find the flower the pink one down here, do that one first. If we're going for mid tones, we're going to add some, maybe even on highlights. Bring the exposure up a little bit. So we're going to add a bit more. Try the mid tones as well. So we're going to create that illusion that things are behind each other. So as those forget me nots and Shadows on as well. And on the daisy at the top. So it shows a nice one. Where it's white, you need to go onto the highlights. And you can see. Where's the blue now? There's some more shadows in here. There's that bright yellow one. Do some mid tones as well. And can you see it's starting to give it a bit more depth? We need the blue ones again. And then onto the other shadows. So you can see that it's all starting to come together with some more depth. And there we have it. There's our face with flowers coming through. Personally, I quite like this. Um, bokeh background that we've got on, but looking at the eyes, he does tend to have a plainer background. So I'll show you how to do that if we decide to go in that direction. We'll use our quick select tool one more time. Make sure we're on the layer with the face on, so we'll select all the bits that are to do with the face, the shoulder, etc. Use the minus on this piece here. I might actually keep that bit as a whole a little bit neater. We're going to do this, we're going to copy and paste this one so we've got that as well. And then there it is with the background. And do you know what? I think it might look really nice with this as a two tone background. So we'll go, we'll keep that colour. Let's cancel this. So we'll click on this. We'll go for a darker tone there. We'll switch them around. We'll use the gradient tool. And we'll pop in a diagonal gradient behind. Make sure we are on the background layer. Make sure it is in the right place. And then we will do our gradient. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, happy with how that looks now. I'm not sure if I if I'm gonna use just some final touches with the eraser tool. Make sure it's soft, but not too large. Fade out some of this. Okay, so it looks natural. Fade out some of that hairline. Just look anywhere where it doesn't look quite right. Just do a little fading. Just 
This edge here doesn't look very neat, so we're going to go on to the layer with that face on. Now this is where you can really improve a picture, just by spending a little bit of time thinking about the edges, smoothing things off, making things look really, really neat. Putting a bit more in. We want to keep that jaggedy edge here, though, so that we can see it's been taken out. Now, it's not the layer with that flower on. Just going to move that a little bit over and off. Just go back to the face again. This time, I'm going to use the eraser with a hard edge and just really find out that chin. Not too far. This is where you can zoom in and see all the details. So smooth that line out. Go it too far again. So we want to give the impression that this piece of face has been cut away from the object behind. There we go. And that bit just needs to be a little bit smoother there. Just tidy up that little edge there. A bit more of that. It's all about the fine details when you're making a piece of artwork. Okay, so we'll zoom back out. And here we are. There is our response to the artist, our own take on it, our own version. So, Marcelo Monreal, thank you very much for your inspiration. And, um, yeah, make sure we save it, obviously. Okay. Save as. And we'll call it Face Fun Art. Fantastic. So, thank you very much for watching this Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers video. Um, if you've enjoyed it and you want to learn some more about Photoshop and all sorts of photography stuff, remember to hit the subscribe button. And um, thank you very much for watching. Okay, and goodbye.